Hey everyone, I'm Tassinix, and welcome to Plotting and Scheming, covering Season uh, geez, 60, 3 vs. 3 Grand Arena Championship, Week 2 for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I am joined by my regular co-host Dagger, TJ, Sasha Aisha, and Fatal. Gentlemen, it was an interesting week. I, I ended up going 2-1, and one, had some incredibly poor luck in one round, um versus, you know, Ray with the new Ezra. This is the de debut week for new Ezra, Exile Ezra, and I'm sure we'll have a ton to talk about there. But, uh, yeah, not bad. 2-1. How about you, uh, Dagger? Tell us ri the riveting tale of your week. CDs. Mm -hmm. CDs, yes, yes. Physical media sales. All right, very good. TJ, yeah. how about you? Uh, actually, I have to play this week, so 2-1... and one. Um, I might have probably scratched out a three and zero, but it just wasn't worth the effort. So I'll stick to my two and one. Um, solid week and solid intel, in my opinion. Dig it, dig it. Sasha Aisha, how was your week? Good. I had, uh, had multiple real matches. I went three and zero. Uh, I uh, had a really fun week. Yeah, so good like mud wrestling with Aesop and with the uh, Partek. So uh, yeah, really good. All right, outstanding. And Fatal, how about your week? Brio, uh, yeah, I, f I full sent it on Ray Ezra investment, and I would almost say that my prediction ended up being a little bit conservative. Mm, better performed better than expected. Then I got eighteen battles across three rounds. Yeah, I think I yeah, was right severe. there with you. That is severe. All right, all right, guys. Well. You know, first segment here, meta-analysis, obviously, we have to be talking about Ray Swolo, Ezra. Um, the defining defense of this week. Uh, share your tales of horror and valor. I will go first. I used EP Mara Jade Starkiller in all three rounds. First round, barely skated by with a 50. It's, it's like they came out of Ray's ult and killed everybody but Starkiller. I saved the ship, shipped it, killed, um, you know, killed Swolo, knocked down Ray with the third, and then threw the barrel to finish off Ezra. It was crazy, but it got done. Second round, I got dodged and resisted to shit. Now, part of this is just bad RNG. The other part of it is specifically TJ is a fucking voodoo hex. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, because oh, TJ, TJ, pop, TJ popped in for advice on that fight and a few other what proved to be very helpful ideas thereafter, and I just have to say, TJ, you're fired. Yeah, I, I already know I was out, buddy. We, we know my shit when it goes to the fight. Oh, it, it can go yeah, wrong. Yeah. If, if there is one person in this chat I would not take advice from, it's TJ. Not because I don't think his oh, advice no. is good. <laughs> not because I don't think his advice is good, but right. because the moment he gives it to you, you are jinxed. It is cursed. Right. It is cursed. It is absolutely. I absolutely live in that realm. Cursed 100%, advice. man. 100%. Except when I watch your... You're round three fight, and it goes exactly as I said. It went crazy. So, like, so I was just about to wrap myself up yeah, there and, yeah. and say that yeah. I uh, I did, you know, EP Marjade Starkiller approach it exactly the same way. Got a 57 yeah. in round three uh, against a, a fairly there. well set up team. It wasn't like it was, um, you know, a, a weak bum team. So, yeah. How about you guys? What do we got? It will not surprise you to know that I did not face a Ray all week. I am sh I'm just That's ashamed a, of you. Such a fucking asshole, you, you have lucky nothing. son of a... As, you have nothing. As we are not allowed to say the words of that, it, but that you know... That blah, being, blah, I'm just bombing him. That being said, TJ can vouch for me helping him yes. uh, walk through that fight initially. We, I, I made some changes to it, but I, uh, I think what Dagger called out, and I think we could show it too if you want, Tess. I'll I know we have it video. both. But, yeah, right. you want so me to throw saying. that up? Yeah, if we want yeah, to, but it's like, I made like, some alterations this was like five minutes after. This was like five minutes after Gaggle. Yeah. 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 And I, <laughs> the nice thing is, what, what I do like There's about no it is... You can't hear what we're saying. Uh, but we had... You, the the one thing I like the, about the update, you have the time to talk it through, right? All we right, get you to guys see this? You guys see on screen right now? Yeah. All right, dig it. Yeah, we were just kind of talking about the, you know, the different things you could do here. Mm -hmm. 
just trying to play with our food to see what it was going to do. <clears throat> yeah, you chose to do the offense up. The stun. Now, this is the change that I think we made. One of the things we talked about was stunt, trying to stun Ezra here. Yeah, that this definitely is what... proved to be better. At yeah. least and for if me. If that's what you're planning least... to do, you need to mod your Mara for an accuracy arrow. And yeah. I actually think you're 100... No, 100% yep. correct. Yep. This is... I, I, I will... Still her way, they have, way the hell down, too. So she goes one after Starkiller. It's, yep. it, I've, that... I've got both for this week, and I, I feel okay, very nice. confident in the matchup. And so it's like... Talk, that's why I was asking you about it. Um, fatal. We'll go back into the points of it that I was testing this out, and where it, it really feels like relic, feels like it matters. Now, the one thing I did note, and we were going through because I kept asking about him applying exiled um, by basically second move, right, Tass? And I said, yeah, well, it didn't feel like he applied it, but he he literally went so fast that he applied and killed my EP at the same time. So that's where I didn't. It just didn't click. I had to go back and watch the video. Also, don't don't you hear what TJ was doing and not take the inspired off Ray? Don't do that. Yeah, we were at time, but yeah, I agreed. Yeah, very fair. Why am I always doing? But, this? but like I said, we're, we were, we're talking about pulling the ship down to survive, mm -hmm. and it was <laughs> we ba we basically came to the conclusion of if we die, we die. Yeah, <laughs> that was at that point. It was just because I didn't have the full the full team there, but we took the chance and it worked out. But also we. Uh, the other piece I would take into that dagger is that we had the still and dark side characters. Heat moment right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is this is why I wanted to bring this up and yeah, what I believe. Like, yeah, no EP, no mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what it felt like, right? But here's the other piece that I, I went through, and you fought your round two, and we confirmed that was a relic nine. Of course, I'm going to go with bad RNG. Also, why Fatal's call out of saying a, an accuracy arrow. Oh, now 100%. Accuracy is the way because, and this is why I asked Fatal, and while we talked about it, Task, in his kit for mastery, deflection chance is there, and it ramps yeah. up to a relic nine. And why Fatal, in my opinion, um, there's more reasons to to his madness that comes into play. His deflection is up to almost twenty five percent at relic nine. No, so, it's over. It's over twenty. It's twenty six oh, and a half for oh, both even dodge better. and That's even better. To, so be fair, better than to, I be thought. Fair, to be fair, you're right, TJ. It's under 25%, but they have the 2% base, which got you here. Yeah. But that's it's that's what I'm looking at, right? It's like his is unusually high, and so where, where Fatal's talked about it, it was just this is like another reason of you want him at the best relics because he's now just a you don't get to hit me bag. He's basically a... Uh, Datacrons <laughs> built in, and that's why I had to ask Fatal. And I know Fatal's going to have a lot of more information, but that's why I was um, watching and seeing what was happening. Where I felt the same thing you did, Tass, on a Relic Seven. It feels unusually easy. I had a fifty-fifty shot on Relic Eight, but on the Relic Nine, without the accuracy arrow, mind you, I'm uh, just putting into that. And I know uh, Fatal talked about the Datacron, but it feels like a different fight, and you are not in the same game. And if you get that miss, no matter what you do, man, does it feel bad. Mm -hmm. I can't even stress them on, like, the bad. Mm -hmm. Quick aside, I do really appreciate, just appreciate it every time CG gives us an evasion mastery character for Ray. Yes. Just, thank you. It definitely makes our lives a lot it's easier. goofy. I just, I, I did not realize, like I said, I know it's, he's going to be great, but it's, like, the amount of what Fatal talked about, feeling the effects, playing him live, right? How fast he gets exiled, how fast he gets to move, he, he just how good he is. It's like I just don't think we got to appreciate. I know Fatal talks about it, and it was just like, wow. What's the rest of his mastery? Is it like CC, CA? What is it? Crit chance, crit damage, dodge. That's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, so it's gross. It's just like I couldn't it appreciate it. So, Fatal, I, I, I bow my head to you again, sir, and, and you trying to explain it to everybody and me not just comprehending the greatness that it is, but it's like, holy hell, this guy is just so good in so many places. It's just unreal. Well, this, this is kind of the nature of 2024 CG design, is they have gotten very sneaky this year in some ways. That. Mm. Th their kit writing has gotten a little bit dishonest that like i i have underrated certain characters before mm -hmm. you see like no, you, you you can't just read this character's kit you got to go read up no, I mean, it's, it's not true for ezra but true for like certain other factions is like yeah like, you you got to look at the full picture to like really understand yeah but like uh, master qui-gon yeah 
with, with Ezra, I mean, I, I read him when he first got revealed and was like, eh, whatever, I'll play in three months. Mm -hmm. And then, like, one week or two weeks before launch, it, it really just, like, wait, this is just, like, every good word you could possibly want in a character. Like, it, it, for, like, a bruiser archetype character, I, I feel like Ezra su succeeds so much more than Balin. Huh. <laughs> Like tr <laughs> truly, like he, I, I'm he, laughing because you're right. I I just yeah. I I don't think I I think it's a different game at the top versus everywhere else, right? If you're not getting Ezra is a proper, oh well, Ezra is 100 an investment dump, and here's the kind of paradox right now is so I went ham. I went three on my crown to Ezra. I took him to R9. I this is what I do in Galaxy Heroes. Yes. I look for power spikes and I buy in really really I, quick. I, I, your fulcrum. Uh, she's still all right. Okay, just wanted to so, just, checking so, in, so, just checking in, buddy. Oh, oh, to be clear, so are the zombie attackers. Don't you worry. We're, we are making <laughs> zero wise decisions today. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but. So here's the thing, right? Is like Ezra is a flash in the pan. Literally, we don't know if he's going to be going with Ahsoka. And I can tell you right uh, now, yeah. th this this team has a hard counter and multiple soft counters that people just aren't aware of yet. That Ray Ezra. Well, it it was like imagine the usual length of a datacron season, and it's going to be like a quarter of that. I, I'm hoping that I get one more good week with them, and then I think it's kind of just going to be but, a, a regression to the norm that you, just kind of punishes. Your call out though is just I I just, I, I can't explain how understated it is in my opinion. Playing the character and seeing what he does, and that he can be so many words. Yes. I agree with you, and and I will never question Fatal's dump into the, the the characters that he does, like his nice sisters, his his Sith. It, it's it's historically known, but I, this I, I character, could, I, could be wrong. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think you are though. <laughs> you called it out as being better than Cat, and obviously when we're looking at things like that, the the reason is like Cat does the insta kill, right? Yes, and then they've also put, it, but he plays in so many places. You put him with a Jedi team, and I know Tass and I talked about it. There's under the JML. He's a great character. That man's a monster on, under that team as well. He's doing things everywhere he goes. I don't see anything wrong with the investment here because of the fact that he is like a just Swiss Army knife. Put him in this team. He changes things up on you, and he's going to mess you up. We don't even know what it's going to look like in Ahsoka. Um, I, they did I, I hope that Ahsoka is either dog shit or just so stupidly good. That you could be like, nah, Ezra. She, she doesn't need him. <laughs> the one yeah, that he has like the, the one, the one thing I'll say. Yeah. The one thing I will the say about Ahsoka fat. is, we're, sorry, sorry, Sasha, I didn't talk. I didn't talk but, no, 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 go ahead. Go, go I'll, I'll follow you there. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. The one thing I'll say about Ahsoka is, I have a sneaking suspicion, no matter how good or bad she is, her value is going to be locked behind a team of five Spectre units. So, haha, -ha, use Ezra. She fucked. I'm fair. talking about three, three, five, five. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, mm -hmm. no, no. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I was. My my brain doesn't process threes the same way yours do because when I see characters, <laughs> we are just in threes, threes, sir. I know it's hard for you to take the game seriously at all right now. Please, but please have a little you know respect you, for where we are. You know are. how you see you see a Concos character and you're like, oh, that'll be playable in three months for him. It's like two years, so just gotta. <laughs> <you know. laughs> that's that's only because of where he got well, placed. So to be fair. <laughs> Yeah, a couple a couple comments to add in here. Like I I I am really uh, I'm enthused with Ezra. I think it's it's super cool, remarkable under Ray. I'll get in just a sec to sort of that state, which is very temporary. Um, be uh, I suspect you know because it seems like certainly in fives the intent is uh, to have him with Galactic uh, Legend Ahsoka, but. Um, I'm really curious to see him in a number of other fronts, maybe in long term in 3v3 without uh, Ahsoka. But uh, the the thing that that really came across to me, so I you know I faced him in, in the matches that I had. Uh, I struggled with an EPMJ uh, one. I um, you know I've, I've watched my own video a couple of times. I'm like I'm not sure what I did wrong, but I think you know turn order and speed was was an issue for me. But um, what really struck me was, yeah, okay, evasion was just piling up, uh, and we do have a Datacron set right now that completely neutralizes evasion, right? Like, because uh, anything that's stunned can't evade, 
and any Jedi, of which we've got, like, what, three dozen, uh, using a special stuns irresistibly. Uh, and so, you know, I did it after failing with uh, the EPMJ Star Killer once. I did it a JMK cat, I don't know, maybe it was Mace. Um, didn't feel great, but I sure as hell didn't let Ezra stun me, uh, like, or, or dodge me. I just kept him stun locked. Uh, JML in my second match did something similar. Uh, and, and it felt like I kind of needed to prioritize dealing with that one mechanic in the match and then just sort of juggle everything else as the, as sort of the, the side game, but just making sure Ezra never moves. Mm -hmm. And it felt manageable, but, um, Terrifying otherwise, if you lose control of that, or you go in without um, that, you know, easy stun mechanic. But, uh, yeah, it makes me really curious about the future of Ezra. And, like, I'm, I'm already thinking about other stuff I might want to do with him. But, uh, yeah, uh, that ended up being my experience, was lean heavily on just neutralizing that evasion. Very fair. Yeah, I, I've seen other people pull off like JML, Jedi Cal, uh, Plo Koon with the Plo Kron, no problem. High, like 56, 57, like 56, something like that. But um, what you else? You really got to love that stun means you can't debate. That is just like one of the better things that CG did with these stun data crons. That is true. Yeah. That is true. Let me is check that this. Address, look, look, man, I, I, I get the sneaking suspicion that the stun crowns and possibly even Balin were kind of timed around Ezra as safety matches. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know if we want to start doing the deep matchup dive yet, but I mean, ba what I can tell you right now is I, I do agree that like especially with Jedi stun crowns, but even past that, I think uh, squads like JML and Star Killer will do fine against Ray Ezra for people who know how to adapt. Um, but Balin is just like. The, the dynamic is you can make your Ben Solo the best he can possibly be, and you can hope that the Balin owner doesn't know that health is a stat that exists, and that's about the extent of it. Otherwise, your Ray Ezra team will just lose. And, like, maybe you get some banner attacks along the way. But okay. uh, that, that insight shielding clause makes so much more sense now that I've seen the matchup in play. And... Finally, for once in his life, Ben Solo's protection ignore is not only, like, you know, useful, but genuinely crucial of just, like, no, you you, you are the only path out. You have to, <laughs> to close this thing out. Otherwise, we just get steamrolled. All right. Um, by the way, you sent this link earlier to this sorting on Insight. Is this yeah, the, 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 the uh, what, this, what are we looking is at my, here? I this clicked through defense. that just for context. I clicked through that and looked at it, and I said, "Wow, man, uh, that is really impressive." That Ray, Ezra, uh, Ben are just terrorizing the entire community. And then I looked closer, and that is exclusively two rounds of attacks against Fatal and Fatal only. So, like, literally, <laughs> all that bloodshed is on his doorstep and his doorstep alone. Fatal, I thought I mentioned to you those people have families. Like, this is just unconscionable. See, this is what I'd heard. I'd heard about this. Seer Malikos Starkiller. This had been through a couple of, of the more recent challenging Datacron metas, like Set 16 with Ray and stuff like that. Um, this was reliable, high banners, and it's just getting crushed. It's not just you that uh, people are crashing against the rocks, but damn. Yeah, this link now includes the third round where they got their in four. But um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Sasha, I, I'll tell you right now that like you said they had families, and I was like, haha, yeah, sure. But like going into the week, I was still kind of reserved of like, okay, my Ezra mods, like I already figured out a better mod that I wish I brought. My Ben Solo, I didn't read bodies on really shitty mods. I didn't do anything with Ray, and so I went into the week reserved of like, yeah, it's a high body count, but maybe it's just like cheap cleanup shit. And, you got any uh, secret sauce in them mods on for the defense team? Uh, actually, a lot, yes. Um, but I, I, so I will add two qualifiers to the start, which is obviously we're into week three, so this is all for next season, which depends on if Ahsoka matters or exists. But if you want to farm ahead, uh, there's a few things I would say. Uh, Ben Solo, kind of, I was just talking about, is like uniquely positioned i think to kind of try to harass balin as well as starkiller where 
you know, I was talking about uh, Mara one speed under Star Killer, so that you you pop the foresight, and then you just immediately have access to the normal Star Killer play pattern with no muss, no fuss. You know, I guess just aside from uh, Mara stun or well, eh, Mara stun or Ezra Evader, whichever line you take to open. Uh, past that, um. The Terminator removal, I think there's actually a little bit of a speed war between Starkiller and Ben and Mara, as well as Ben and Ezra trying to get ahead of Balin and try to be a little bit of disruption, because I don't know if you all have seen the Balin versus Ray matchup, but... I have not. Uh, Here's the elevator pitch for Balin, is mm -hmm. they are the closest to the old Jedi armor ignore combos that you can really get to. They will negate all of your armor and just the way that the matchup works, right? They get all that shielding and then Balin is priority target for whirlwinds. Ray is is essentially removed from the match and it, it is genuinely the Ben show. So anything you can do of like Ezra trying to stun um, Balin off Ripper, Ben trying to remove TM is like genuinely you're trying to buy yourself time to try to get Ben the chance to at least like try to nuke out Shin before she puts you in the ground. Cause so, like so even Mara is a pretty fast Ben we're talking about then. Uh, pull up my Ben if you feel like. Yeah, sure. We can go ahead. Would that, would, would counterplay be worth since they're ignoring all the armor? Were you worth putting a, a health cross on Shin? Uh, yes. The, the, this is kind of the thing that terrifies me is ultimately the Balin side holds the leverage. If you just want for health, that they're, they're, your victory is pretty much secured, I would say. It, because it would Shin, be... is, Shin is one of those characters where I feel like her just surviving long periods of time to do will do more damage than if you... like. <clears throat> I was talking with Cass about this the other day, where I moved her into a health cross, same with Sabine. Just because they're like relatively squishy, and they're long-term damage dealers. Or, you know, they... The longer they live, the more damage they do. They don't need their burst to do as much. I'd agree with that. That's a good call out. You can't do damage if you're dead is kind of the long-standing mantra that I yeah. follow. <laughs> what? And now that that people don't hurt you? Primaries with like 4% offense secondaries. I know I say we, but you know what I mean. Now that this has become <laughs> more normal, right? The health and pro primaries with offense secondaries. Um, yeah. I think we keep those more often now. Well, than knowing, knowing that team, it feels weird, right? Because Shin is really doing all of the, to me, she's the cornerstone of the team. I, I get, I get there's a wall and that's Balin, right? But if you look at all the things and the uniqueness of what she does, she's the one to me, who's like moving the board around and what she's going to hit you. Yeah. She runs a lot of BSF where she has a damage, like she has good damage. Well, yeah. Yes. I did back in the day. But she's mostly a, a utility DPS where you just one hundred percent. I she having seen the videos that I've seen, which actually I could send them if, if it's a point of interest, just to help visualize a bit. They're not like the craziest best teams, but with the numbers getting involved anyway, I think it kind of basically what's happening is I think CG kind of branded them wrong. Balin is just trying to be the initiator yeah. that op opens the floor up for Shin and Maroc to. Yeah. I I. Think, Split them wide open. I think you're both spot on. That, that feels exactly what it feels like, right? It's like, yeah, my Balin's gonna go, but what is my Shin gonna do next? Is always what it feels like to me, right? The the Marat kid is simple and the effects of what he's gonna accomplish and what he's gonna do. The Shin and the steps that are making that are doing to me significant pieces to the fight. So Talking about the modding here, I've I've got Ben actually leaned a bit towards crit damage just because I every time Ray takes a turn, eight casual eighty seven percent special crit chance. By the way, I told I told you I'm in the weeds, man. It's a uh, <laughs> <laughs> real casual, real casual. Well, this, this is what I was telling Tass too about Ben. Like this was like months ago. I was telling Tass to get his Ben up to like eighty percent crit chance. Yeah, I'm not well, doing that. just listen to me. People associate Ben with true damage, but. Traditionally, all of the oh shit moments that came out of Ben are usually because the single target damage component of his AoE would crit, and that would like put you on the ropes that the AoE would finish you off, off type situation. That you know, Balin and his squad ramps eighty percent defense every time Ray takes a turn. So this is really kind of oriented towards Ben turn two before the offense gets too oppressive. But th this is basically just my week through desperation play of how much do I want to try to overcommit to this? 
in case Balin popularizes a bit, because if people start to realize like just how hard of a counter this is, if you really wanted to tech against this, there are two considerations, and I went with one. The first consideration is Accuracy Arrow Ezra, because Balin's squad has 20% built-in evasion. That if you want Ezra's son to be 100% reliable, um, you can swap the arrow out for a high-speed accuracy arrow and go for that. But the thing I kept coming back to is how much do you, you really want to overcommit to Balin versus like reap rewards for all the other matchups. So I canceled that one out, but I am doing Ezra one effective speed under Ben. And when you think about how the actual fight flows, it's not... I don't think it's incredibly realistic, but again, I, I'm trying to just lean in on the cope of if I can have Ezra's second turn happen right after Ben's second turn, I can try to cheat out one extra Ben turn that cycle. You know, it, it'll mm -hmm. be a Ben basic on that turn, but it's at least trying to push him back towards his specials again before the Doomsday Clock. Uh, the normal Ezra modding, I would say I, I kind of prefer to be a little bit faster, a little bit, you know, you can sacrifice some health and armor, but th this is more or less the modding that I was on last week mm -hmm. that got the record that I got that had 120k health, about 364. I was going to say, okay. sacrifice, I, I don't think that's the average sacrifice, because considering most average humans, Fedor, are talking about 100k, and you're saying, yeah, I sacrificed some, and you're still at 120. Mm -hmm. That still feels... No, no, no. 120, yeah, is four health 120 is pre-sac, to, to be clear. Yeah, it um, is. It's solid. Rock Let's kind of go back to the Valent thing. Do you think a CA arrow on Shin is enough, or do you think you'd want like an offense arrow on her and a health cross? Just for the people out there who may not have like the depth of health primaries with good offense secondaries. If you don't have a health primary, then crit or crit avoidance is probably better than nothing. But like, I mean, I I, I cannot say enough that like, they, think of it as they have infinite protection. So literally, the only way you can lose is running out of health. That like. I mean, look at your five dots and see if you have any spare health laying around. Like, I, I don't, but you might. That could just, like, you know, take whatever speed drop need be if you're running low on death or whatever. But just, again, I cannot stress this enough. Your victory is inevitable. As, as long as you're, like, a decently invested Balin. Okay, I, I, I can find those you're YouTube links. And... When you say decently invested, you're saying over R7? Or do you project that R7 still has the same... I, I would imagine that R7... I mean, it, it's it, it's possible that Balin Kron is kind of adjusting things mm -hmm. expectation-wise, but everyone who has Balin has Balin Kron. So, like, yes. the, there, there's no, you know, real gap there right now. That, you know, the, the gap is however they rolled, but... Okay. You know, well, I was, I was just pointing out, like, you said well-built, and I'm saying is R7 a good enough builder? Are you advocating for R8 just as with, a floor for this? With Balin Kron, I would imagine it is once the... Kron goes like maybe the dynamic gets a little bit tighter, but I, I would still say he's heavily favored because again, every time uh, Raid takes a turn, you get fifty percent bonus protection and eighty percent defense ramp, and so oh, Balin basically just ignores Whirlwinds because Ray always aims at a Balin even if he's not taunting, nice. and the shielding also eats railed, just like pretty much guaranteed that. This team effectively just wipes Ray off the map. You think this was CG's intention, seeing as like you said that they're hard coded to whirlwind Balin? The co well, okay. So the, the programming for hard coding Balin isn't actually technically Balin. I think it's just the lead slot is who she tends to go for. It's weird because I saw someone say that recently. I I thought she would always whirlwind Palpatine because I thought Whirl Palpatine was a priority target. But maybe that's not true. Maybe definitely maybe seen her slot. go after some Mara Jades. Definitely mm -hmm. seen that, yeah. Um, I, I know we want to mention Queen Amidala as well when we were mentioning Jedi teams. I don't know if we did. Maybe maybe I'm just forgetting. But uh, Queen Amidala, Master Qui-Gon, Padawan, Obi-Wan, Set 17, Stun Kron, for all the reasons already mentioned, why Stun is so great against it. Yeah, that's that's another option if you're willing to take your Queen off defense. That, that's what I used. With Ron um, getting in shore, beating... Uh, Padme's or Queen Madala still like I just I personally that Thrawn still... thing. I'm glad you asked. I tried that in, in round one. Um, there is every possibility that it requires some type of stat balance or a different turn order than the one I used. I tried to intuit it. I didn't have any 
insight into how to do that fight the one time I tried it in round one of this week. But basically two times we got close to chipping off Padawan Obi-Wan with um, Moff Gideon's AoE. And we just couldn't close the deal uh, either time. So, yeah, I don't know. I had the buffs level 3, the alert level 6, so I, I think that's the absolute minimum to get the job done. But it did not work for me. I had okay. a similar issue with, like, unreliability. I had it work once, and I had it uh, full fail a second time. Uh, what, you know, I, I, what's that? Can I ask you, Sasha, would both, would both people you faced, or is it the same person? Or was it was it variations in the people you tried it on? Meaning, like, uh, did you try it on an ASOP and then, I don't care. They were both um, full, uh, like, R9 squads uh, that I faced with. I mean, so it's like the you know, Partick and ASOP. Uh, so two of the top accounts, both w very well modded. It worked against ASOP. It failed against Partick. Uh, I, I had a similar experience to TAS where um, that, uh, that special of MG came relatively close. I mean, not... I, I, it wasn't just down to a sliver, but relatively close uh, to taking out, uh, I think it was POW on the other side, but didn't do it. So it's, it's possible it was a matter of like more health modding rather than like crit damage or so like just more uh, hit points generally on, on the opposing team. I didn't see how the POW was modded. I, I didn't go back and double check. Uh, but, you know, it, it worked smoothly against ASOPs. It didn't work against Partex. My only other one was uh, going to be is a possibility of, of Datacron. Uh, I, not yours, I, theirs. Yeah. I, I thought it might be, but th they were fairly similar. And I, I look back, and the difference that I did notice, I don't think impacted. If anything, would have been more favorable for Aesop. Aesop, I believe, had a level six Jedi turn meter on buff, which gave him. I, I thought that presented more risk because would give him the opportunity to possibly lap my Moff Gideon. It didn't. Um, Partick had a stun on six, I believe, and yeah, that led to my shore being stunned, but. That ended up making no difference. I could see how it could right. because he wouldn't be able to re-up his taunt. But they just plowed down Shore anyway before they even targeted Thrawn or Moff Gideon. But once he was done, you know, I I was too. So, uh, yeah. Out of curiosity, what relic is your Shore? Uh, eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think... Oh, I'll just finish my thought then. Since, Please. Uh, if that isn't consistent, then yeah, by all means, keep it on defense. My... Talking to a couple of people led me to believe that it was a little more consistent than this current conversation. Um, so I was going to say, if that is in the case, which it is not, Queen Amidala would could get pulled. But yeah, if it's if it's not consistently beating it, I'm just saying that that seems too cheap to set if your opponent just gets to like Gideon it. Sure, uh, if but you're yeah, fighting an opponent that shows proficiency, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So when you look at your opponent, if they are consistently being able to get that to work. Possibly consider pulling your Queen Amidala, just in reference to Tass saying, if you were so inclined to pulling your Queen Amidala. Yeah. Now, I think we've covered very well, by the way, uh, all these different options for taking on Ray Swallow as or Ray as or whatever, I guess. But um, let's go ahead and move to the next matchup. I know Fatal wanted to talk about a couple of his that were particularly interesting. First up, BKM versus Leia. Where, uh, which round was this, or where do you want me to take us on that one? Uh, it was round three. It didn't win. This isn't like, th this is more like putting on people's radar than like, hey, if this plays out, I think this would be a huge chunk of value, potentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, my BKM modding was like, has not been correct for a while, and I was just lazy to fix it. But with a week like this where my defense just auto won constantly, that I, I was kind of just willing and able to full send whatever I was in the mood for just to see what happened. Mm -hmm. I didn't think this would be anything, and it like, sides dead, Leia dead once, and this is with my modding deeply incorrect, that if you're interested, there is one slight change that I would make from normal BKM. So normal BKM, you need them to be faster than BKM just to have like the ideal opener. Mm -hmm. If there's a pre-stun in play, like a R2 assisting Leia, the BKM gets faster, so then you would need to make your BAM, like, have a bit of a speed gap just to help offset that. And then I think if you really want to be thorough, I think you make IG-12 faster than either of them, just so that if the flow chart goes on stun on BAM, then you can still get your opener. Kind of kind of like the classic IG-11 BAM setups, right? Where fast IG kind of... Yeah. Freeze everybody up, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because, you know, Bo's got the tenacity up, Bam doesn't. We use IG-12 cleanse just to open it up, and then you still get your combo off. I I think, the, like, this seems incredibly promising, and I, I can't really speak to Bo-Katan's normal matchups with how much of a pain uh, Tanker Vive has been. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, hopefully I will get the opportunity to work at it this week that I think uh, hopefully plays out. That is a pretty high value. Yeah. That's a good one. All right. Uh, another matchup you wanted to cover was Zori. Finn Zori versus the Gungans. Where are we going for that? Uh, I think it was also okay. this Let's match. Scroll back up. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -ba. So it was. Very first one. Yeah. Um, Phalanx is kind of a pain. I don't know if I prefer Tarbos or Phalanx, but... So, yeah. I... It just, again, kind of just looking for ways to value trade and kind of ease off pressure. Not that Gungas are, like, that crazy anymore, but I don't really have a high calling for Zori either, so, like... No, this is a big deal. Yeah, it's it's, it's not it's not the defense that it once was, so you got a set 17 defense penetration, little bit of defense, 32% potency. You have this uh, light side speed up level 3. Um, how flexible do you think this counter actually is? How much of it do you feel was, you know, dependent on this set 17 data cron? That, that data cron is not, like, optimized in any remote way. That, right, that would not right. treat anything you see there as sacred. Okay, like, so like, could, you could just as well run with, like, a set 18 mercenary and see if the Zori thing was any fun? Uh, yeah, like, if, if I had it my way, my ideal crown would probably just be like a bunch of defense with like light side tm or i mean speed up is okay as well but okay yeah okay so they, defense, got defense is key goals. for you in this matchup um if you're fighting against tarples i i suddenly worry about defense a lot more mm. if you're fighting phalanx then deathmark is kind of the biggest scare for you and i got i caught deathmark a few times here but they just don't really have enough moves to challenge how much sustain you tend to get i'm not going to bat for this counter nearly as much as uh bcam against leia and yeah i i think this is more so just me calling out that like hey i think that there's something promising here that if this continues to play out could net you an advantage the bcam stuff requires a bit more setup this is like yeah if, if you've got a a durable enough Zori squad, I think you could just tussle this out against Phalanx. Still on Cherry against Tarples. Tarples, you might be more in the hook for, like, coming correct and being able to take those uh, Tarples hits can definitely test you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other thing I will say is normally I am very gung-ho about Zori modding that I say cut their damage. You do not need it. You absolutely do not need it. You know, this is an exposed squad first and foremost and their base damage is high enough. You need the damage here. Look at the timer on this fight. Yeah, 455. Per percent yeah. health is so marginalized against Gungans. It's it, totally true. Yeah. Exposed is just not doing the work. Even it's marginalized, the and they value. had a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had a, I think, protection region from somewhere that I don't recall. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely, like, took some working, and, like... At some point, I just, like, stopped talking. I was like, okay, no, I, I need to play this match rather than commentate mm -hmm. this shit and actually, like do the damn thing how much of that clock is you just being incredibly deliberate and how much of that clock is this fight like actually being like a huge timeout risk uh it's hard to say because i think i switched modes halfway through it, it is definitely like you are cycling for the sake of you know your team going through one rotation of buttons we're talking like 25 to 33 percent of phalanx's protection bar for example that, like, yeah, no, you, you do need to... Th this is a volume of turn type counter. I'm, tr I'm struggling okay. to think of, like, the last example. Kind of like this is a versus Jabba, but, like, we, we've had this before, right? Where it's, like, you're guaranteed to win this, but you just need to press buttons, like, 150 times within five minutes type shit. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I said. My, my question was more of, like, is this a four-minute fight or once you get proficient with it, it is not a timeout risk but still a four-minute fight? Or is this, like, almost always going to be a timeout risk? Uh, I would I would imagine that once you're comfortable with the fight, because I very much was not. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it probably is not this close, but I can't really say confidently what yeah. it looks like. Sample size and, of one. Like, yeah, sample size of one, and also Finn is a very health-heavy character that it's possible that, like, Deathmark on Finn is just, like, a, whoop, I'm fucking done type boom, moment boom, that... Boom, boom, boom. 
yeah, you gotta respect gun gun volatility that like you know there are some unknown quantities here versus like. Okay. B, B cam versus Leia. I have a hard time imagining how I could possibly be done there. It's just like the matchup seems kind of solid now. This is like, yeah, you're still kind of leaning forward. You're still kind of edge of your seat type shit. Very is fair. death mark random or does it go on some or is it targeted? It random between anyone who has at least three debuffs on them. So with Zori and Finn both in the squad, you do have a lot of clints, but um. It's actually kind of a textured matchup. Like, for example, uh, Boss Nass is constantly checking Zori. And I, I, I don't know for sure, but just like from how the matchup played, I think Zori's Omicron shuts off if she's not in stealth on turn start. And so there was this constant flow of like, ah, Zori Omicron. Wait, why is it off? Ah, Zori ever. Wait, why is it off? That like, it's possible that I should just be like holding Zori Mass for straight after Boss Nass or... I don't know. I, like, okay. Sample size of one and... It feels like there's some bones here, but at the same time, especially it, with how passive phalanx squads are. Yeah. yeah, this one just interests me the most. I mean, not the BKM versus Lay isn't impressive, but this is one where it's just like, could you be more budget? Yeah, yeah, the value trade's incredible, right? Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like, because a lot of people are holding Brandon. Dungan lately, but this is still a very common defense. Sorry, you were gonna say. Yeah. I was say make all the jokes you want about where I'm at in GAC, but I mean like. This is, like, so good. Like, if you can just prot stack uh, OG Finn and then maybe just put a prot circle on uh, Resistance Hero Finn to just, like, minimize death mark, and that's the only change you have to make to just cycle enough turns. Yeah, anything you do to weigh against death mark. The, the issue is I think Finn's base is, like, only 20k protection and, like, 50k health. Or so. Like, the ratio is just okay. insane. Mm -hmm. But th that's not to say that, like, doing that work couldn't still help, right? Like, yeah. it, we're still, at the end of the day, talking ratios that, like, you know, chuck in flat protection, chuck in the data crown with any protection you could get. You can yeah. still do that work. Very fair. Yeah, yeah. Very fair. Okay. Um... Now, before we close out meta analysis, speak now. Forever hold your peace about any other interesting uh, matchups you wanted to cover there before we go on uh, best How do you attack. Guys and beat your twelve geos without a data cron. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I enjoy when I get. Do you risk uh, Treya solo? Like hmm? seriously, do you risk Treya solo? Um, no, I don't usually do that. You know what I do love? <laughs> you know what I do love though. Every time I can against the geos when I get Nerodium is the solo Darth Vader. It never gets old. Well, I'm like try that. It never gets old. Oh, that actually sounds fun. I'm like you're that. almost universally faster. I can't. I don't think I've ever run into one where I wasn't faster on my Darth Vader, and that that's some satisfaction. That is pretty rare. But uh, all have right, you, fair enough. Sorry. Have you considered the possibility that like you've got a unique opportunity to become a content creator for mid game players right now to like show them <laughs> yeah, the yeah. how to how to use your R nines to fuck that's up right. your That's That's right. All right, you will, you two kids will have the same results at Relic 3 that I do at Relic 9. Here we go. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right, um, let's close this one out and go to best attack and defense of the week. Uh, Dagger, I, I, won't, um, I won't waste your precious time. No, 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 no. I told you. I got this. I got these. I got these. Oh, All oh, right. oh, oh, what you got? What oh, you got? so the best attack of the week. Uh, your family tree is a wreath. <laughs> the best defense of the week is no you. All right. All right. Those of you who, well, who don't know, I'm just basically giving the best insults and rebuttals that my kids had this week because my gap doesn't mean anything. That is no. that is fantastic. Absolutely I appreciate your contribution. Irrelevant. <laughs> yes. Th thank you. Thank you ever so much. All right, TJ, what you got? Let me let me flip over to your tab. Where are we going? Um. Obviously, we're not going to do Ray, right? That was uh, obviously its own mainstay. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't get to have 18. I feel kind of sad and I didn't get that Fatal, but also I didn't put the investment Fatal did. My my Ray got 10 holds with all quality teams on round two, but we won't go there. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go Drakens. Drakens is a round three. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. The one that caught him, it wasn't the Ray. It was the Leia. So we've talked about it, and I've, I said it before, and Leia if always felt like a main staple of just holding things down. Five attacks in. And yeah. it was just doing dirt, protecting itself from all things coming. Um, oh, and even got a is, message this from. This is maddening. He didn't. He went with. Uh, he didn't go with the Jedi stun here. Yeah. So uh, I'll still take it as a. It's cool to get a five shot, but also very scary when when Fatal says, "Yeah, just go use BKM." It's like, well, that's not nice. Well, shit. But yeah, yeah. Well, Leia, Leia still feels like such a good thing on the team because just like you go for all the other pieces and then you leave Leia and then you've left Leia. So. 
people just seem to forget that. And that was that's where I take my strength from. Um, definitely favorite defense. Attack was everything I was doing on on really on Ray Ezra. Everything else to me felt irrelevant because it all felt the same Z's. Um, I did get a, a Night Sister team to work out pretty good on Jabba round three, uh, but but no um, other 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 noteworthy attacks. Uh, no, just Queen. Queen felt good against uh, a different setup a, on round three. Ray. Yeah, I see that here. Yeah, so the one thing that made it interesting that he did for the setup, and I took note of it because it was cool. He did the Jedi. His Jedi Kron is high tenacity, mm-hmm. so it's it was an added hundred percent tenacity. His his Ezra was 244% tenacity, um, and the pieces that would apply to it. And so with that, and then the turn meter gain, it was cool. So watching the fight, and I kept it, and I just played it in horror. Um, irrelevant to Queen. Queen didn't give a shit, and she said, oh, you, you think you're cool, and then commenced to just beat the shit out of that team. But it was a cool idea uh, of having the Datacron be the Jedi stun to play that factor, because... Uh, I think as Fatal said too, he, Ezra moves a ton, man. And with each move, it's very scary, right? Mm-hmm. Turn one, if you get into turn one and he gets to go for a turn two, someone's exiled. So you've already lost a character, even if you don't lose the character. Uh, so you're you're literally looking for how do I prevent turn two? And that's where I think we've talked about with Star Killer. Um, oh, also, really quick, another quick reminder. One of Ben's Omicrons makes that giant nuke a two-turn cooldown, which means he's doing that every other turn. So make sure you check. You mean, uh, one of Ezra's. Ezra's. That. You're saying Ezra's. Yeah, yeah, Ezra's. Yeah, That's what I'm Make sure you check special. Ezra's omies because that one special he has, yeah. it reduces the cooldown, and that's terrifying because that thing so, is a truck. And, and the idea that you put in a stun on Ezra, so you're playing double down into it that if he gets to go, so high speed, high tenacity, the turn meter gain, it's cool with the idea. And then mm-hmm. you went high tenacity mm-hmm. on the Kron to play with the fight. Um, I, of course, took Star because I, I wanted to check it out. I had all of the bad luck that you had. To so I told you I, I took it all from you during your round three because it was like I used all of it. All of the dodges, all of the deflections, mm-hmm. all of the good mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Queen just doesn't care. And that's to the point of what Fatal called out as well. That with Stun Jedi, two of your teams are Jedi. It... It just takes care of itself, and then you don't get to play with that. You just lose. Okay. All right. Uh, Sasha, how about you? Your favorite attack and defense of the week? Sure. So attack will be the first one that shows in uh, my round two and round three histories there. Uh, really smooth, and that's like, you know, the Enoch, Night Trooper, Death Trooper, Peridia, oh. uh, very smoothly one-shotting Jabba. Yeah. Very smooth. Yeah, um, there's just nothing to it. And uh, is, know, is it about fifty three in both cases? What do we get here? Uh, it, yeah, yeah, it, it was. You know, there, there's some regeneration involved, but you know, when you've got debts, uh, you know, all over the place, like you, you, you lose at random, you lose health at random times. But yeah, uh, it it felt comfortable, um, and uh, so that I, that was solid. Uh, I you know, it does have the Death Trooper Peridia level nine. Uh, I think. You know, it's it's doable if you have, well, frankly, any other remnant nine. Uh, I would say Enoch, but the Enoch one uh, makes no meaningful difference. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think as long as you've got the alert six, you're probably in good shape. Then uh, on on defense, you know, thinking of a couple of different things, mm-hmm. uh, I'll, I'll go with. Um, this sort of stemmed out of the, the Ray conversation and, you know, my discomfort with how EP MJSK went in uh, my round against Aesop. Uh, so I set it up front in my, in my last round. So you'll see it. I think it's the first defense there. Yep. And, uh, you know, it ate, ate a JML. So like, you know, it being able to hold against, um, you know, a GL was, was nice. Yeah. So, you got yeah, the damage so- immunity level six on here. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. And ultimately, MJ fell, uh, and you know, it's 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 a shell, you know, or a shadow of itself once it's uh, it breaks. Star Star Killer's unique in the next round, but I'll take the hold. So those Absolutely. were the two that that stood out. You know, there were a few others on the margins, but those were the two I figured worth noting. Okay. All right. Fatal. How about you? What you got? Your favorites. Sounds like you have a, a few high high performing um, defense week at least. Well, well, we already kind of talked about it. I mean, Ezra. Kind of just stole the show that yeah, okay. everything past that was just kind of like 
Yeah, what are you going to do when all of your teams just got put into a, a collective blender? Very good. Um, I, I guess... Yeah, like, Balin is mostly just doing his job and eating shit to open up territory for everyone else. So I, I guess what I would say is more sort of towards the offense side. Like, uh, I had a very weird... Knights is the first. I, I feel like a broken record where I, I swear I'm not the nicest is the versus Jabba guy. It's just a matchup that keeps on like showing variety. I don't know why you would ways. ever try to not say. Why, why would you? Why would you of all people ever say that? That you are not the Knights is well, versus Jabba guy. The, 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 this is like when people are like, "Hey, you're like a separatist fanboy, right?" And it's like, "Look, I don't love Grievous and the Geos. They just happen to be mechanically interesting." Okay, but. <laughs> Fatal. To be fair, and let's all be honest, it was not cool to do Night Sisters until you did Night Sisters on Java. You are literally the pinnacle cornerstone of anybody who tried this shit was you, and then we put together pieces that are not as cool as yours, but you are hands down the guy. It's the same thing that goes, and I'll keep saying this because I still remember this to this day. You are the Sith dude versus LV. You were the cool. dude who was making Treya cool, so it's I, just, I think, just own where you have it. I think I think what Fatal's trying to say is that uh, he can be, you know, Reggie Miller. He ain't trying to be Steph Curry. Sure. I, I, I'm, I'm not sports savvy enough to appreciate the uh, reference. Basically, basically, he may popularize something. He doesn't want to be the guy known for it. Right, he, right. <laughs> mm, I, I, got, I got the reference, and I don't Man really doesn't want to get I, typecast, at least for that. I can appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Very good. I, 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 I'm just not trying to be Sheen bringing the same team to show and tell for the seventh time in a row. Like, anyway, uh, so my Talzin, it turns out that the three v three loadout just sucked. Like, I, I'm I'm so fucking happy to have this fix for this round because look at that data crown that I brought. Just you see that just... defense number? Yeah. My the nature of my Talzin modding, like she had health primaries and crit damage mods, but mm -hmm. she didn't have crit chance secondaries. And that 32% defense was enough to make it so that my Talzin couldn't die. So mm -hmm. I had the sides dead against Jabba, but I, I could not actually get to last standing. So when you look at that match result, the thing that I need you to know is that Talzin got ulted by Jabba and permanently killed. Really? And for... I. Again, I'm not trying to be the Night Sister guy, but I cannot <laughs> remotely fucking tell you my Marin was still able to infinite loop anyway, and I don't know why. Because every other turn, I would do a Marin basic, and the, no Mother Talzin would show up, but then she would just take a bonus turn anyway, like, haha. <laughs> That's, that, that, there's layers of bugs with that. It's just, it, it just the game gave up. It's like, wow. look, you don't have other towels in, and you know what? You can have it anyway, Fatal. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was my, my loyalty program. <laughs> fucking. Liz Swingo said, That's right. you earn enough bonus points. You get the win anyway. Shit didn't go you like you expect here. You may have it anyway, sir. Here is your prize with your Happy Meal. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Also, fuck, match one. I, 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 again, I swear I'm not trying to be the nicest guy. Fucking shoot me <laughs> in the brain right now. This, look at the Jabacron. This is the same shit that I've been running. This is perfect tech for against Night Scissors, which, fair fucking warning, it seems like nobody is running Night Scissors, so don't tech something that, that nobody does. But they had the Tenacity Jabba. They had Dark Side Regen on Resist. And th this is a battle. I, I didn't think I was going to be able to stream that day, so I started running fights off stream, and I didn't get to show this one. They had the tech. They had the Tenacity Jabba. They had Tenacity on Kron. They had mm -hmm. the Regen on Resist. He was staying at full health permanently, and so I had to improv it out where I had to cycle Mariner vibes to get Asajj out a couple of times to try to line up the heal block with Asajj Omicron. It didn't work the first two tries. I got it out in the last try, and it was down to the wire, but yeah, cool, cool fight where like I was actually able to overpower the tech uh, just barely. Like I, I did get fairly lucky that like I think I revived Asajj every time where like if you just roll a talisman, it's like, well, sorry. Yeah. 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 All right. So, yeah, fortune was on your side, but I would have been mad if I was this guy trying to specifically build against that because most everybody's running the set 18 mercenary, light side, max health damage three. So, yeah. That, yeah, that, that was that, a choice. That shit, that shit does not matter for uh, Marin. Not at all. Not in the least. It's trivial for that. But, yeah. All right. 
Good stuff. Um, for my part, let's see. I, I want to say we had some pretty good defense action. So this is what I'm talking about with people using like Seer Malico, Star Killer. You know, two Relic Nine characters on here. You've got well. See, I don't know that I would have done this with Terran. The Terran Malico level nine. I, I still argue is pretty poor. Uh, love to see that. See, I I asked uh, Michael what happened here, and you know. The RNG gods chose me because they decided to blitz down his Marin. So, okay. Rule one. Don't get Marin focused. But, you know, I'm, I'm down with it. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, yes. This was really cool. Okay. I have been seeing Inquisitors be 100% against Balans. All right. And this, in my cron, is nothing exceptional. The level three is bulk. Uh, level six, long text. And then... My stats are split four ways, 63% offense, 80% defense, 58% health, 57% protection. So actual mediocrity. Um, and he's got 998 relics on these guys with the Grand Inquisitor Cron, bulk level three, turn meter level, or long text level six. Um, it was a decent setup. Crit damage, protection, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a decent setup. So I haven't really seen this happen for a lot of folks. That one jumped out at me. And let's see. I think I had a couple other things. Yeah, that, that was just his day, I think is what it was, right? Because I did the fight with the Inquisitors against the, the Balin setup, and, yeah. I, and I could see where there's a small possibility of it catching you, but it's just the day of, just set your phone down. You're not going to gack today. It's okay. Go play something else. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I don't think there was anything revolutionary in this one on attack. Uh, bu 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 um, oh, this is the one. This is the one. Holy crap! No, oh, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna go get the video for this. Yeah, y'all deserve this is, okay. to be seeing this. Okay, this is, this is me still being on the this, call. So I, just so I, were. I was, I was so I was mad. I, I was <laughs> bet between, between the advice that I got from TJ. Which and, was correct, damn it. Which was correct, but still, it was it was something. It was real, and it was something, and it was well, really. You something. got a fifty-seven. Let's call it correct, but but I still laugh because I'm right. like, yeah, this is a hundred percent on Swiggo. But mind you, mind you, he didn't. So so hold on, let me let me give a little insight here. Please. Tass and I were talking back and forth, right? He didn't just take advice and go like that. He went to insight he went to look at actual data we we, we tried to be coin. cautious and, Reason. And let me add oh, let me man. let me add more to the fire this was when the characters were relict right so mind you he put in limitations that would make it higher than what we faced so i just want to preface that when we watch this he did his homework he didn't just walk in he was already understandably tilted but this was still he methodically approached the fight but, trying to learn but all that said so i had a set 17 this was my finest armor penetration and crit damage crown <laughs> that i had and and again the idea was is like this is going to be a pretty reasonable trade if it works because i sorted for non seven star great mothers and you could see this was a five star right obviously no data crown attached um, granted, all defense mods, health primaries that he had on there, you know, uh, at 5A, all, all decent choices, but nothing that should have stood up to that on paper, you would yeah. think. All right. You just got to let him watch the video from there. That, that, that's where it's like the, yeah, the, yeah. the music. No, I, I appreciate your preface as well, because I was, I was going to say, like, really put some thought into it and then it did no, not yes. feel it did not feel like a reckless yeah, choice this, I, I said let's just go with something here we go here we go all right here we go watch this watch this watch this hold on i'll speed it up after this initial moment but you got to see this in real time what the fuck is that what in the <laughs> fuck <laughs> like nothing it was literally it nothing was and i was in nothing. amazement amazement to see that amount with data crawd she just took that shit and said, sit just the fuck no down. Just no data crime, whatever. Now, I know that there's yeah. a whole bunch of defense and health multiplier yeah. action in there. I, you could not have convinced me. I would have never expected that. I don't know if and, you guys have other thoughts on this. It, but it's just like, and Swiggo Insight literally said 100%. So it's like all of this track. It was a small Datacron. sample size, like only three or four fights, granted. But, but we've had good results on that type of thing before when we've dared to try. Yeah. And yeah, no, not today. 
Actually, and you had the data cron, and you had the added data cron to, to power it, and it was like, oh, you thought you wanted to do something. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Yeah, no, this was a complete horror show, and I hated it. The, the absolute... <laughs> This is why we really need players to work on their fundamentals like territory battles. Because if you played the Nathamir special mission, I could have told you that Nash was not going to end well. Oh yeah? Why is that? What did, what did we miss in this? Uh, they they just regen very well off of multi-hits. So like, if you played the Nice Sister special mission, normally dash AoE just like insta-kills your team unless you put on pervert levels of defense. Mm. And for Great Mothers... It, 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 Dash like might as well not even exist, or like he kind of puts the team down to half. But they they absolutely if if you have a kit that says I do damage to you multiple times, they're like nah, you f threaten me with a good time. I'm gonna regen per hit. It's fair. Ha have you heard of Barris? I'm like a a super Barris. So, fair. Yeah. But would you what would you say to surviving even the first tap of Han on a five star? Uh, I I think Han. Could use some help nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, but like, like it's, it's, it's like looking at like a kid going against an adult, and you think like, but no, I'm a super kid. I've got super. No, it it's is like, actually like that. It, it, like, I feel, I feel like some like vagrant, like drunk on malt liquor that spotted right. spotted the playground not... of kids across the street. I go and pick a fight with the smallest, weakest looking one, and yeah. like 15 seconds later, just crying on yeah. the ground. Because, yeah, Fatal, you would agree, right? Fatal, you, you're not nothing when it comes to your modding. You're very me meticulous. Tass is very meticulous. So it's not just I threw on some shit it and it went time. to town. It so it's Tass modding applied. And we looked, right? Because obviously there's no six-stop mods. There's no good. heavy build-in. This is like you've taken your template and I just hit auto. And this mm -hmm. is what we get, mm -hmm. right? It's, well, that's, to that's what it was. Point, to Fatal's point, though, and I think that this cannot be overstated and needs to be said – Many, many more times for people who need to hope slash cope let slash like realize all these old characters multipliers are kind of doo doo. Like the new characters are just so much better than the old characters. I like, don't disagree. Fatal's right. Han needs a lot. Like Han needs a buff. Like Han. But he I'm did. not saying he sucks. He did. I'm he took a data crod. He took a buff. That's why I laughed at it. It's like. He even got yeah. the added belt of having let me put on. And he, as as Tass said, Tass, was that not your best armor? It was the on? finest armor penetration <laughs> I had available for the entire now, I round. This. Now I will cop to this. Tass did message me uh, about this team, and I did not respond because I was, you know. Yeah, I DM'd him before I started streaming. It's like, what would you take against this? Because we all know what you would take against the proper team. That's fine, but it's yeah. like I wonder what you might try. But seeing, yeah. but I would not have taken anything less than CLS lead. No, we talked about it. It we, had we bad didn't. metrics. The we, the the win rate was actually significantly worse for was, CLS than it was for Dash. I was there, thinking the same at first, and then it's like, so, okay, we'll okay, just lock on. in Pass. with the Dash then. Pass. 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 It, Pass. What was my recommendation to you? It's funny that you say that. That what was my recommendation? I was like, well, if I would do anything, it'd be what? I don't remember now. CLS lead. That's exactly mm -hmm. what I told you. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it would be. I would take CLS Han Chewy because that would make sense, right? The the pieces that would go together. I'm not not taking the fatal, but so it's funny that Dagger it, said that to you. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna do dash lead, I would almost assuredly take like Vandor, uh, Young Lando. This hey, is again, on, it was all data driven. It was it was it. already shown look, to have been look, successful here. with very very high. I'm gonna be honest. Is there I'm something to be honest. said here? Yeah, sorry. You, brought an armor pen, you brought an armor pen crown against the character with no armor, but like maybe that also plays a boss. So. It was it was both the highest armor penetration and crit damage. Oh. Okay. It, it was yeah. all of the good things. Yeah. But it's funny, it's like when we said CLS, right? Cass went and scoped the data and the data on CLS, I, I wanna say it was zero. I remember zero. It I was, remember being very like, oh, I was you wrong. Straight up, say the sample size of this was like three or four fights. So well, like, remember with all with all the filters that I routinely apply, yeah, right. like across all of the different counters done, there was only a handful of each. But the point was, is just within that handful, yeah. there were definitely standouts. Okay, so it's like that. Anyway, the the whole point is ne nothing huh? could have prepared me for that experience. <laughs> Sorry, how'd that work out? Yeah, I, I I was surprised. I was, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. 
it, it, dude, it was a hundred percent. You had to be there. If you got time, you can't. No, you don't. You didn't have to be there. If you have the time, go back and watch that that uh, that first cool. uh, 30, 40 minutes of the VOD once we get started on the fighting. No, yeah, I, I just have to comment that the having to be there live and watch it and just in dismay. And I know mm. I always have something to say. I was literally shocked. Mm -hmm. All I could do was apologize because like it had to be me. I had All to right. be there and it, it had to cause it. Well, well, let's let's close this one out because we still have a good bit of stuff to get through, guys. Um, let's see, did, wait, uh, did I miss anybody? No, I think we got Sasha, then Fatal, and me. Okay, yeah, 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 no, we're good on that. Um, all right, so, next item. We're gonna probably have a later separate conversation here about all the kits that came out, because last Friday was a crazy news day, right? We had this, um, update about, what is it? The community update, the eras, the episodes, all of that sort of thing. The new questing system that's come. So, you know, I this is an enormous post, and I am definitely not going to do what I would otherwise like to do for new releases and just read it top to bottom. But, guys, uh, talk about what you like about best about this, the, the real highlights for you. Yeah, for 30 bucks a month, you can play this game for free. Go on... You're not, uh, just so you know, you're not sharing to us, Tass. It's paused for us on our oh, side. Oh, yeah, yeah, let me, let me, uh, that's, that's just. Get tab off of League. No, 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 I had. You know, you're A-ramming. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to start just super high level on it in that uh, what I take as like a clear positive out of this is uh, continued signs of life and effort being put towards, I and I know there are many other things that are happening here, but there is genuine effort towards quality of life, towards, uh, you know, I think, sustainability of the game. Agreed. So on the high, more abstracted level, I, I take that as a meaningful positive for a, a mobile game that's approaching, you know, yeah. a decade. Yeah. So uh, that is, is a high-level super positive. Um, now we can crap on it. Well, no, I, I would, I, what I said was actually, like, a good thing, right? Like... For those people who want to spend on this game, for 30 bucks, you basically get everything. Well, like detail that. Whole. Detail that. How do you mean? Oh, so for ten, the $10 Conquest Pass and the $20 uh, monthly Battle Pass, what do they call it? The Episode, the pass? episode Track Pass. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to refer to it as the Battle Pass from here on out, and y'all can just know what I mean. Sure. Um, but between the two of those, those are going to help you get all the new characters a little bit quicker with the shards. It gets you a total of like 12 Omicron, or no... 12 additional Omicrons, so like 28 Omicrons a month. Um, it gives you a bunch of other, like, stuff in the store. You can go look. There's some stuff in there. Uh, yeah, the cool. I, the store does have some genuinely cool things. I, I've there. been buying attenuators. For that, because my I'm man. Getting the rest my of that man. Stuff. Not, not that any of the stuff in there is bad, mind you, right? Like, Kairos are good. Mods are good. Like, there aren't bad things in this store. <laughs> Um, there's even shards, but I yeah, I just bought the attenuators there for the 4K. Yeah, but makes sense. The, the the point I'm trying to make here is this game, if you're willing to spend the 30 bucks a month in what we'll call air quotes upkeep, I think that's probably all you have to spend, unless you want to spend more. Mm -hmm. I um, I don't I, I don't even know if I would call it 30 to be honest. Like, I mean, depending on whatever people are comfortable spending, I'm actually probably going to cut out the conquest pass because. Like, the Conquest Pass was never really about getting characters faster. It was actually just kind of like a solid relic pack. Because you could just, like, take that 2,000 currency and put it on a character... Or on a relic materials and salvage signal data. and signal data and all that good yeah. stuff instead. But, like, with how much is being offered here... I mean... You know, again... Like, I think for... Yeah, I agree with you for us. I'm talking about for the mat. Like... We play at a different level than a lot of the people, and I'm simply saying that the Conquest Pass makes a lot of sense for a lot of people who still need a lot of signal data and uh, right. gold gear and relic material. Yeah, I like you're, you're saying this is like this is the this is the strike zone for dolphins. People that would be willing to put in a little bit to get a lot of value, and and these yes. are the value plays. Yes, I, I think that. I mean, obviously, I like Fatal just said I was going to talk to you about this later task, like probably next week or so mm -hmm. about like i might i'm probably done buying the conquest pass like fatal said because i don't need the currency anymore mm. um i think you that, get that starts to come down to time now i really feel yeah. like that one's starting to get to the point of time because dagger is the one who sold me 
on doing the the higher tier conquest pass. Do the, I was pass doing, do the thirty dollar pass, not the ten dollar pass. If you're so inclined to buy the pass, you're gonna buy the thirty dollar pass for the stamina regen and all that stuff. But I, if you don't buy the pass, the currency you get from playing conquest is enough to buy all the signal data and all the shards. The only thing I wanted to ask to make sure of, I know it's in this it post it talks about it. If you buy the twenty you get the 20 shards. Um, it didn't look that way to me in game. I bought the $40 one just because I, I was, I wanted to see the value of what it looks like. And I'm, I'll make another informed decision based on next month's. Um, I actually I, bought the $40 I, I, pass. Cause I clicked on the one that popped up and I didn't go in. It, so yeah, it's not, it's not, pass. it's not clean, but to your point that it's not clean. It's not cleanly out. I know they were trying to make it very, very evident of what's happening. But when I looked at the $20 one, it did not look like you were getting the shards. And at least for this month, yeah, you, you are. You, tap you on are. The box. You have to tap on but the box. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It, it just felt very. Like, I didn't have a lot of time, right? And so for no, me, no, I didn't sure. care. But but to your point, like as we get further into it, and this one, you get 20 shards not only for Hu Yang, you get 20 shards of Sindula. So that's 40 shards total, both characters. That to me already starts to add in the value of what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, but I agree. I I don't see a reason. I think 30 is a good call. Of what you're trying to do realistically, because the value of what they give you feels super strong if you're willing to pop 20 bucks mm. just for it. Let's let's also really quick mention that they give you a card of 15 Omicrons or whatever it is when you buy the 10x pack. Oh yeah, I I saw that today. I was oh yeah, yeah. Was of the who yeah. Hey, we'll talk. We got we, we got a topic right? item for who yeah. I was talking, so I was we'll talking talk. about we were talking about quality of life. I was okay. simply right. mentioning that as a like quality of life aspect. Big deal, that, right? big deal. When you when you pull yeah. that trigger, you get the fifteen there, the and the five from the 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 marquee. So the marquees now, if you do the ten x pack, give you the full Omicron for the character. Yep. Th that was crazy which when I saw that. I was like, buy, which, really quick, which means you don't have to buy the thirty dollar pack, the thirty dollar four star pack anymore, mm. because you're generally reading the value in that is the omicrons. Mm -hmm. So well, now also, you can just, sorry, no, it's like I, to your point because that's the first time they've done it, right? That was a general question. I never, I've always it's missed the, the ten pack. Well, no, I'm saying the other ten packs they've done have not had that omicron built in, right? This is the first time. I've missed it. Why I'm I asking think, that is... I, I think so. I, I've not I always would, gotten the, the... Okay. I think, and I don't iPad. think I've ever heard anybody say that for this one. I, I honestly believe, this is just a, a hypothetical, that this is the first time they're offering that amount of Omicron mm -hmm. on top of the 10 pulls. Mm -hmm. And with that, it technically is a lot cheaper because if you're doing twelve ninety nine per, it was already talking about the value. So if they continue that QOL as well, that is a huge added incentive because we already know how expensive omicrons are based on their values sure yeah i'm simply pointing out that they reduce the cost of new characters even further by doing mm -hmm. that and and by the way guys um i didn't end up clicking it but i had to sit here and stare at it for a second because i was thinking hmm maybe i want to have the fully upgraded episode pass plus because I'm thinking, ooh, look at all these extra shinies. But then I actually bothered to read English for a second. And this is going to be unlocking 10 tiers, both top and bottom of it, with the pass activated. So it's unlocking 20 rewards that you were otherwise actually just going to earn anyway with the base, oh, uh, with the and, and first the upgraded record, level remember of the pass. The, the pop-up is the $40 pass. Don't click the fucking pop-up. Yeah, the $40 pass doesn't seem that it's great. It's 20 plus this. <laughs> I, I, I got it. This time and this time only because if you got in game in the first hour of the patch hitting before the store reset, mm -hmm. you could use that excess currency to buy out the episode store. Nice, smart man, smart man. Fair Never enough. gonna buy it again because yeah, you're you're getting like it's this is the exact same system as Marvel Snap and it's a good system. But what you need to know is it's not really trying to scam you in any way. Like you will reach the end of the pass as long as you're like decently interacting with the quests and the quests are not made to be hard yeah. like it's there's not conquest box. level quests it's just okay. like not yeah not only are you going to reach the end of it there's like a box you complete multiple times at the end that you're going to probably complete a non-zero amount of times as well yes so like like you 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 can be a part-time player and probably and by part-time i mean you probably still have to log in every day i'm just saying like you can pro you can complete like the pass without doing everything like, yeah, it, like if, if you take a two week vac week vacation, then like you you can, you will still have all of the chapter quests by the end if it works like Marvel Snap or like you'll log in and there'll be like hey, twenty eight things that you can like I, knock I, out. 
What's funny be. is when you do the Hu Yang event, I feel like I was completing not only the character one, but if you go and look, like I haven't done anything else, right? I just did the the Hu Yang setup. And by that, I had knocked out so many boxes of what was going on. Like, yeah. obviously it's showing you in game, but it's like not only completing the character pieces for Hu Yang, but uh, I was getting the actual event pieces uh, going as well. No problem. Hmm. Yeah, th th this this is not conquest levels of like we no. should get out of your way. This is like, hey, go play with the toy, and if that means autoingo marquee, that's fine with us. <laughs> yeah, very fair. All right. Um, so the one the one negative thing I'll say about this is that they basically told us, yeah, we're gonna just like, yeah, we're just gonna have a whole lot of paywalls, like to, to break it down as much as possible. We're gonna get four to six marquees per quarter. And then we're going to have a an event or a journey guide release at the end of every quarter. So we're going to get two-ish marquees a month in perpetuity. And man, that's going to get old having a new character every two weeks. Um, now, they said that it won't be every month. But they basically couch some of their language. But this is basically saying that they're going to put out a character every two weeks in perpetuity. And you're going to have to buy a non-zero amount of those. So they make characters cheaper, but I feel like there's going to be a lot of burnout from spenders with this. So that's the biggest negative I'm taking away from this update, because we've already talked about it. Overwhelmingly, the majority, I believe, of this was incredibly positive. Mm -hmm. The battle pass. We can, the most negative thing I can say about this update is, man, you could have done this like four years ago. <laughs> No, I'm serious. Though. I like, think overwhelmingly, I'm very positive on it. Yeah, but yeah, go yeah. ahead, keep on, keep on. No, 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 that's all. Like I, I was just saying, like the worst things I can say about the majority of this update is like I can't believe you didn't do this sooner because you're one of the, not one of the last. I'm sure there's other games out there, but for the other games I've tried, they all have battle passes. So this game not having one outside of Conquest did feel different, and now that it's here, it's like all right, cool. And like Fatal even pointed out, we don't care how you use the new toy, just go use the new toy. The thing I'll add on is when it comes to like a new character fatigue, I would say, cause I, I think there was a trick that got kind of played on me to a, to a degree where as marquees became cheaper, it was like, it kind of triggered the part of my brain where we're like, Oh, this is a no brainer now. And it's like, no, this is the new paradigm. Like, do you, right. do you, do you actually need this character at this timing? And so I think as we move into this whole era system, I think I'm going to try to fall into the pattern that I usually fell into for like major temple releases where it's like, okay, I'm probably going to farm the first few characters of an era. And then as the event closes, I'll maybe consider the last yeah. character or two based on whatever the timing ends up being on that. But that, I, I you know, that's what their goal was though. Cadence. That's, that's especially since we have a set <laughs> cadence fatal, like you mentioned, because they've been pretty, the transparency here is like nice, but it's also like, where's the other shoe going to drop? Because I, I feel like this transparency is going to come with a cost. I, I think I'll be okay. I understand buyer fatigue. But I also want to say I, I really feel like that was the goal of doing exactly that, Fatal. That was their entire intent of where they've gone and what they've done. I've heard Solo say it. I've heard other people where there was a threshold for spending. And it was making it okay to get within that threshold, right? So it was like them playing with the dynamics to get you to be where it's like, oh, no, I can still do this. It's fine. This basically represents CG going <coughs> face up, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. in the past, historically, Galaxy of Heroes was, was always like, almost to a bizarre degree, it was like, no, the whole gambit is like, we're trying to keep you in the dark, we're trying to make you right. read tea leaves, and then, oh, well, the event's here, and uh, did you did you work on this? I nah, you... did you panic farm enough? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the accurate FOMO, right? Did they, mm -hmm. did they catch you? Did you make the gamble, and it was a good gamble, right? Did you... The ha, here's this, as they call it, surprise penis. Now you get it. Ha ha. And yeah, and it, that's, yeah. That stuff was kind of fun, but like, I mean, the, the easy example I go back to, fucking Galaxy Heroes history is like, yeah, right? Like back in the Solo slash Old Republic era, I was like, well, Solo is the temple release because it had a movie come out. So I'm going to work on those guys because they're probably going to get the thing. And uh, nope, it was, it was Revan type shit. Oh, that, like that, that was just the game back then, right? It was like, yeah, yeah it, you're literally guessing, and well, you guess wrong. And so now this is basically CG saying, "Hey, this is where we're going. 
you have a pretty good idea that this is probably going to result in something. We're going to continue to try to incentivize new content to like make it more appealing to you because especially when you talk about early mid game players, characters being accelerated and you know relatively easier to get. I think they were probably running into some sort of pressure where it's like a lot of new players look at new content. They're like, well, this doesn't really make sense for me. I'll, I'll, I'll play with that maybe never or maybe years down the road mm -hmm. type shit where like... Uh, it's very yeah. transparent, very respectful. And, and, and to what Sasha was saying earlier, like the, the feeling of long-term investment, they, them continuing to put more effort into the bones of the game and into the systems of the game. Uh, yeah. Very encouraging stuff. You, you don't do this yeah. if you're hesitating. Yeah, yeah, like because the first I, I saw some some people that I really strongly disagree with on Reddit saying uh, saying something like uh, you know that they're only making moves like this as a desperate last minute cash grab. It's like that is absolutely not what this is. You do not put the type of man hours into what was done here for that type of ambition. You push the monetization button and then it just shows up in game and that that work just gets done automatically. It's crazy. What, what were you saying, Sasha? Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, it's just gonna, I, 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 that's part of my optimism and positive perspective on this is this was not a redlining dynamic. This was not them just the. You're breaking the up a bit, just so you know, buddy. The, uh, sorry, I'm in transit, so hopefully this will be okay. Um, mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're straightening okay. up a bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and part part of the the optimism I have here is like you know we love to play this PvP element. You know, this is primarily a, a GAC focused show. That um, this sign of life that this represented to me makes me feel like whether it's GAC as we know it or something, but that there's more evolution to come, more investment and attention into the mode that you know I really enjoy. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that uh, is like indicative of like some opportunity there. And the other thing that I'll add is like, yeah, I, I, well, I'm a little bummed at that volume of new characters coming out. I feel like that's that's more than I was hoping to see. Um, I, I greatly appreciate the transparency, and I feel quite good about like the 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 intelligence behind the kit and team designs generally that this game has mm. put out. Like, I, I just feel like. Uh, uh, you know, put whatever skins on them you want. I happen to not be particularly excited to get another Bad Batch squad, but so be it. Um, but what they roll out, I have just found has been um, innovative and, like, interacts with the huge, complicated existing game pretty well. There's just, uh, there was reason for optimism. That That's kind of where I came out. Here, here. Oh, here, and, here. and just to piggyback off what, what everyone has kind of said, what the, what the three of you have all kind of said, as someone who, you know, has put a fair amount of years into this field, when you feel like you are going downhill, the response is not to make the thing cheaper. No. Right? The response, <laughs> the response is to release our nine packs 3x times 50 for one relic ability, one relic level. Right? That's what you do when you're trying to, trying to like, milk money. Mm -hmm. Like, this change is absolutely going to make them money. But it's not going to move their bottom line. So, like, the people who, like you said, Tash, who are negative on it because it's, they think it means doom and gloom, it's like, this isn't moving their bottom line. Like, this is, this is actively going to be hurting their bottom line. You don't reinvest in a game that is sunsetting. You don't ever see a yeah. company that has built a PC client. You don't see uh, a thing that's like, here... We're going to quit the game, but here, let's make this huge improvement to AI and let's mm -hmm. make a huge improvement to the back end system mm -hmm. and the huge improvement. And we're also going to set up a quality of life update for you that's going to have 17 different things that are doing mm -hmm. all this. Oh, we're trying to make, we're trying to think of the player. They don't care. Any game who has ever sunsetted is how can I make more money before I get out? Mm -hmm. That is, you, you don't get a, you don't get a long drawn out. And also, I just want to know, it was cool to see Crumb as one of the producers. I don't know if anybody caught that. But Crum, our, our longtime guy who did communication, is actually the one who helped write out that long, drawn out, very eloquent uh, information, and it was based on him. So it's like they just you don't do that. Any Here's game that's Crum. going away, that's what I'm saying. But it's like and, and Meathead too, right? They're, they're not. Mm -hmm. Why would Meathead come out and try mm -hmm. to get information, try to get feedback? They don't do that. They don't care. Mm -hmm. They've got your last dollar. 
we're done. And, and here they're talking about, no, here's our structure now, people. And here's your time frame, what you get to expect. By the way, we're quitting tomorrow. No, no. Very it, good. It just inconceivable. Also, for those, of you who, for those of you who think that we are, I've been called a CG show many times, but like I have been mostly negative towards <laughs> CG on this show, much to, <laughs> much to the chagrin of many people. <laughs> but I, I do. It, it, I, it's one of those things where I think it's worth giving it a few minutes right. to talk about the positives as well because we are normally like what are these what is this bespoke beta uh, bespoke data cron bullshit right you know like there's so many negative things that have happened over the last like year in this game and by negative I mean like we have voiced frustration for it etc right um I, th I think negative is the correct word I, like bes bespoke data crons are just straight up anti competitive I, they I, are. I, Fair Especially enough, with the stat anyway, variants. I'm yes, that too. But I'm just saying I'm very pleased that there is positivity to talk about because I feel like the only times we talk about CG is when they fuck up. Fair. So. <laughs> here, here. All right, guys, I want to wrap us up relatively soon here because I don't want to keep you too terribly long. So I know before we get on out of here and we do the takeaways, we wanted to just briefly mention uh, for those who did wail out for Hu Yang or however well you have your Hu Yang. Any plans for Hu Yang this week? Nope. Okay, thank you, Dagger. Appreciate your contribution. Uh, yeah, not really. I mean, you know, I, like obviously there's a Sortie Kron going on right now. Hu Yang's numbers are just like a little bit lower than I was hoping, but I don't think he's like a droid a serious attacker. Like, his numbers are very respectable, but they're not like I need to see this in action ASAP level. But okay. yeah, all right, yeah, know. Sasha, I can hear your mics open. What's up? Yeah, you know, I, not that's formulated yet. I mean, I, I, it, it, I'm just looking at the same stuff. Um, to do the opportunity. Oh. Costing Ezra over and running Spectre. Come. Can you hear me? Uh, you're 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 Sorry, coming and you going. You're coming and going, but something to do with the Spectre yeah, comp. So you're I, I, okay. Well, the opportunity cost of pulling Ezra away from Ray just feels prohibitive. So I, you know, I, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, not for this week, but I, I'm excited for that Spectre comp and maybe slightly terrified of Galactic Legend Ahsoka and that squad. So that's where I'm at the moment. Very good. Uh, I, I like what they've done for each character right now, which is cool to see, knowing that, that Ahsoka is going to take time. I think Huyan's got legs in the sortie nuke. I feel like that's a good, strong possibility. Not necessarily, maybe something to catch you off guard or something yeah, else. Yeah, you want to believe, because we've long had I, the elements of a, of a purely light side uh, droid team that, that might be, it's almost it, kicking. We need T3's Omi to work in GAC. That I would be dope. That would be incredible. That would, that's, that's, that would be really good. I would really that like would be, that. That would be really, really no, no, good. That, that's what that needs. That team needs an Omicron yeah. to be relevant. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah, GAC yeah. one would be great. So I agree. T3 in there would be like make that a short. Yeah. But it's cool. They're, they've, they've done, they've tried to do good things with this character knowing that Ahsoka was on a longer haul, right? Ezra is, we would have talked about Ezra at length. Um, but they try to give Mando ties to what we'll see, you know, well, if Ahsoka's not out, well, we can put Sabine with, with BKM and Fives. She's got legs there. Sorting mm -hmm. Nuke, there, here's another tool for your Sorting Nuke for your droids, because it gives a call out <laughs> that way. So, it's fun to see, man. I, I still like what they're doing with the setup, and I, I am... We faced Ahsoka with just Sabine in the, the Balin event, right? And that already had some power behind it. So, giving it the tweaks, I am way way excited for what Ahsoka might bring. Uh, the power there was was crazy good and what it could just delete. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really have any big plans for, for Hu Yang either. I'm not, not, not that pressed. You, you're thinking that maybe some adventurous folks might do Ray, Hu Yang, Ezra, and then do something like um, an RJT team with Old Ben and, and somebody, something like that, a split of that kind, for the very few who have went so far. That sounds awful. That does sound awful, but it does sound like something I, I you know, somebody, you got to try what's new if you're going to go to that length. There's really only a handful of people in the game that are going to do it, but you, know, you got to wonder. 
All right, guys, takeaways and final thoughts. We're wrapping up week two here. Certainly, with all the time we spent talking about Ray Ezra, that was the defining match, um, you know, compared to what we learned already from week one. But, yeah, the offensive application for Balin being kind of a cheat code against that team, uh, unless you mod specifically against it, as Fatal was saying, is new information. Because I, I think that was one of the struggles that we are coming out of in week one, was talking about, okay, so maybe Balin doesn't look like the most impressive defense. Well, where is he really good on offense? You know, maybe your opponents are not usually setting their JMK, which you could, you know, otherwise probably pretty easily stomp on, but that was exciting to see. All right, uh, Dagger, kick us off. Your takeaways and final thoughts. Bring me 5v5, damn it. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. So that you can continue to do one fight a match. Right. It's very good. To do nothing. No, no, yeah. I've been clearing their board. Eat shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, um, very good. I, I actually, you can go through my history. I lost a fight last week. I forget, I forget what I even tried to do. I tried to solo well, something. What's cool is, you know, it's, it's a fight. It's singular and it's not. Purge him, <laughs> purge him from the guild. There can be no peace. <laughs> no, I just what? mean, like, this, the new characters coming out, like, I expect Ahsoka to come out during the next 5v5. Mm. So, I am not trying to fast forward too many weeks. I'm just saying she's going to be here like the first week of December, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Dig it. Fair enough. TJ, how about you? Your takeaways, final thoughts going into week three. I Okay. I don't take away from Fatal, and I, I love it, but I, I, I want and I question if there's any room for the JML Ezra and the surprise that... I still think that he elevates so many teams, and there is a data crown out that says Jedi stun. That would just be super gross if you're giving everything foresight and everything else. So it's like, I I, I don't discount the the setup and and the easy call out of putting her with Ray, but I, I just uh, he's got so many pieces. So the Ezra feels like a big question mark. Mm -hmm. All right, fair enough. Sasha, how about you? Your final thoughts, lessons learned, things you're excited for week three. You know, uh, I, I'll just say, like, in the the group that I've been battling in GAC, it's good to see less erodiums in it than there had hmm. been before. I think we had, like, six legit accounts and only two erodiums. Uh, so if that um, that leak has, has been fixed and there are less uh, erodiums dropping through, that that's great because it just means more matches uh, and, and more fun so uh Here. that feels pretty good and feels like the rhodiums are sort of drifting down so uh um yeah that that changes my weekly experience and i'm pleased with it that's it good stuff man all right and fatal how about you uh your takeaways final thoughts uh yeah the, the season i think it has just been a really really enjoyable one uh I mean, obviously, it's easy for me to say my defense is blowing up and it's giving me, like, full budgets to just do whatever I want on offense and get away with it. But, yeah, just really enjoying the bejesus out of it before we head to fives. But I, I think uh, if there's anything I'll shout out right now, I, I think more and more, like, I joke about, like, this year is the year of crit chance or, you know, whatever it makes sense for said characters at said time. But, like, I, I think Ezra and Ray Ezra this week specifically, because, again, again, to be clear, Ray Ezra is counterable, and their fate will be to be not be worth it, that I, I do expect that Ezra will go other places. Like, even if Ahsoka doesn't have a strong claim to Ezra, I don't think Ray Ezra will be the final home. Mm. Unless you're, like, a mid-game player, and then, yeah, you probably still post it because you farm people. Uh but I think this year has been one of the most rewarding years for, like, being really, really picky on mods that you keep and specializing the crap out of them. That, like, you know, all I really did to prep for Ezra was just start slicing the crap out of, you know, defense mods with good speed and percent defense rolls or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that prep put me in position that, like, you know... I, I did see that some people were su succeeding with stuff like SK Malikos or whatever, but like Opera Suicidic uh, preparation with mods and then gave him a defense data crown and like that was enough to just like turn a lot of stuff off even with a Ray and Ben that were like 
not all that impressive. But yeah, I, I think uh, if you're willing to do the elbow grease on the mod side of things and really just lean in, like this year has kind of been a min maxer's paradise. That Very fair. Kind of, to, kind of to echo earlier, the designers. I would say that the designers have never really stopped cooking for this game, but I think this year they have really kind of reached an interesting level of complexity where the kits aren't crazy complex, but there's just so much room to like, you see a stat or a line of text and you can just like hook on that and make a build around it. Mm -hmm. And those builds have just like overperformed in every way that, yeah. Yeah. Now you, I think you said it best earlier. The, uh, the, the notion that, you know, over the years we've had kits of in increasing complexity, but this year you've had several teams you know, your, your Queen Amidala, your Gungans, where to, to have a full understanding of a character, you can't without considering the rest of its, um, you know, locked teammates. And yeah, uh, it, it does, it's it's created them, it's created for them design space, right? Uh, I, I, I think it is. I think it does all bode very well. So anyway, sorry, uh, whatever else you had to say. Nope, that's pretty much it. Just uh, if you're willing to do the the research and the prep work on the mod side, I mean, I'm, I'm also I'm, gonna give Fatal. Fatal. Fatal gets another title. I'm gonna do, we'll also into another one. He's the con ca conquest character guy because he's done it with Luthen. He's now doing it with Ezra. So it's calling it now. If you need a conquest character guy, go talk to Fatal. He's your dude. So he's the nicest dude, the Sith dude, and now the conquest character dude. Mm -hmm. I go. I go where the good words go. But my, my my allegiance is to, you know, I, I came up with this yesterday, last night. It's dumb as fuck, but I call them GACs, good ass characters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I told All you right. it was bad. I told you it was bad. <laughs> look, look, fatal. <laughs> They are going to talk a lot of shit about that. I think it's fantastic, and you have no. nothing to feel bad about. All right, now you see? All right, well, let let that be known to you, Fatal. That's the level of humor you have stooped to, such that Dagger's like, no, 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 that that, that checks out. I found that funny. He no, he's, a dad. he's yeah. a cat dad. No, 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 don't take this shit uh, away from him. He's a cat dad. <laughs> cat dad jokes? Got yeah. it. Confirm. All right, all right. Well, I, Fatal. I, I, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I only invest in GAC Omicrons. What can I say? Ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> Anyway. All right. Before before we uh, before I go ahead and close this out here, where can the good folks find you, Fatal? Twitch.tv slash Playbook TV. And uh, I did see some confusion, so I, I'm gonna clear the air. I am working on channel stuff. I cannot promise that you'll see it shortly because I saw some confusion about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the project that I'm working on is very fucking big, and I'm busting my ass off. It's about a lot of hours, but I'm, I'm very fulfilled. It'll be here when it's ready. Mm -hmm. And you'll know it when you see it, but okay, it's it, it's cooking. That, it's not not trying it. to push you for any type of promise date. You think before or after New Year? Uh, for the current scope and scale, after New Year. Okay, it, it that's would be, fine. It would, it would be cool if I could coincide with New Year. Um, but yeah, just, just the volume of work I got to knock out. No, it sounds like yeah, it sounds like you're in the weeds with it. So that's why I asked. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll look forward to that. That'll be a treat in the New Year. Okay. Um. As far as uh, me goes, yeah, I mean, I, I gave those comments before, uh, you know, as far as myself goes, geez, as far as me goes, oh, that was terrible. Um, but yeah, before Dagger sounded off, I had a few thoughts, and then, I mean, just specifically thinking about week three, I, I'm thinking about other applications of Starkiller. I'm thinking about defensive applications of Starkiller. Historically, it's kind of been... Only occasionally good, depending on the Datacron meta, and then generally fairly poor. But I think this, you know, Starkiller Datacron offers a unique opportunity to be super powerful on defense. So I'm thinking that's the way um, this week, since I'm not really wanting to rely on EP Marjade Starkiller. Uh, the, the results were too mixed. So that's that's my thought. Uh, okay, so other than that, yeah, if, you, if you're if you used to catching me, then you know where to find me is twitch.tv forward slash Tassinix. That is where I stream live. I do upload my VODs with chapters added for easy browsing to my YouTube, Tassinix Gaming. Um, I also have some other sort of related content that you'd be very interested to see out there. Got my Datacron set guides um, currently on set 17 and 18. I make those with Aesop Rock, top player in the game. 
uh, great to have his information in there. We've got the mod guide videos on characters and factions that you have requested. So that's uh, an ongoing series. We've got my most recent specialty video. We've got that um, tier list for GAC Omicrons. Really appreciate you guys blowing that one up. Thank you. And let's see. I think that's it there. But of course, you know, the Plotting and Scheming podcast is up there as well on YouTube, but it is hosted here on Spotify, um, out on Google Podcasts. Uh, you can take the RSS feed link that's in every episode to plug it into whatever your preferred podcast program is, Apple Podcasts, what have you. It's uh, it's pretty interesting to see how you guys like to listen to the show. And we have a, a growing audience um, for the podcast, but not on Spotify. It's a like on Spotify, but more off Spotify. It's kind of interesting. Anyways, uh, yes, so that's all there with the YouTube. And, of course, if you like the cut of my jib, you like the, the, the channel, you like the show, and you want to support what we're doing here, I've got a uh, cash app at your request. I've made one is dollar sign Tassinix. And, of course, uh, if you want to get something back, help raise your scouting game, get some benefits, join my community, check out my Patreon. Of course, I have the wrong slide up, but we'll get to the right one first. Check out patreon.com forward slash Tacitix for any upwardly mobile Grand Arena player. There is something there of interest for you. $5 a month gets you into the Tass House at VIP Access, where you get early access to the Plotting and Scheming podcast, which is generally coming out Friday mornings. My patrons are getting it Tuesday night, uh, depending on you know how quickly YouTube is about uploading. But yeah, usually within hours of recording. Uh, you also get early access to the Datacron set videos and, of course, a dedicated text and voice channel on Discord where you can usually find me lurking. Pop on in and say hi. Thank you so much to Andrew, Arj, Deadpool Kyle 28, JJ's Productions, Jobin4527, Johnny B. Ottawa, Miasmo, Ray's Malbus, Sam Vimes, Squed, Str uh, Stark Strategy Gamer, Sweens14, White Wolf, and Zoltre. Moving up to the $10 a month tier, VIP Access Plus. This is a uh, Patreon bundle for myself and for Omegabot. So if you watch for any of my streams uh, at the start, I'll pull one of these reports on my opponent. And Omegabot offers you, better than anything else, an at-a-glance understanding of your opponent's offensive and defensive tendencies. But with the boost from the Patreon, you can pull greater than just the last uh, two weeks of history as well as get a downloadable HTML report with link integrations right into swagga.gg or, you know, Insight if you have it. But uh, fantastic tool. Thank you so much to Stryker, Esh Sotnikam, and Dobby for taking that offer. VIP Access Premium is $15 a month for the DoubleBot bundle. So, Patreon access to me, to OmegaBot, and to Hot Utils, the number one tool for your mass mod management and loadout configurations. A couple clicks can get you easily set up between TB, TW, Raid, Grand Arena. Just saves you a ton of time. Can also help you with your Grand Arena scouting and, you know, if you and your guild are starting to get competitive. Lots of helpful tools for TW. But thank you so much to Duckstab, Dark Hug, Ivanek, General Milan, Sir Boss, Quig, Wilco, and Frick Frack. Ugh, let's try that again. Frick Frack Paddywhack. Got it right. At the top of the list, the one, the only Nomads Reaper in Jester's Club Elite. This is, uh, without exception, my most generous supporter over the years. This guy will pop in from time to time on streams and drop hundreds of subs, thousands of biddies. Incredible support. Thank you so much, man. And of course, last but never least, our special thanks. First, to Yoda Force, one of my original supporters from way back in the day. Bought me the mic that I'm speaking to you on right now. And even though he has long since quit the game, we wish him well from the other side. To Mrs. T, my wife, thank you so much for all of your work in the background, keeping our daughter from utterly destroying our home while I'm trying to be halfway decent at a phone game. And of course, to Dagger, TJ, Sasha Aisha, and Fatal, my co-hosts here on Plotting and Scheming. Uh, you know, it's a fun time every week recording our show. It really is a pleasure and a privilege, gentlemen. And we're learning from each other. I've already got a couple new ideas that I didn't already have coming into this conversation. I know our viewers feel the same. Uh, we're each bringing a, a delightful flavor to this recipe. Wouldn't change a thing. Thank you guys so much. All right. Your co-hosts, I would like to thank everyone for watching Tess's Penis.
You satisfied with yourself? You happy? Only if it makes the YouTube video. No, it's it's making the video, buddy. And it's just me <laughs> staring at staring at the camera, staring at you. That's just for you. Uh, yes, right. I am proud of myself. Thank you. I am 12. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. All right. Well, anyways, guys, uh, good luck in all of your preparations here for week three and uh, looking forward to wrapping up the season next week. Until next time, it's been real. It's been awesome. It's been real awesome. Take care.